Life Audio. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We want families to come here and gain insightful strategies that empower them to successfully teach diverse learners at home. Hosted by founder and CEO of Sped Homeschool, Peggy Ployer. Our goal is that these powerful weekly conversations will boost your confidence to cultivate the best at-home learning environment for your student. For more homeschool resources, go to spedhomeschool.com. You're listening to Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. We'll start the conversation with Peggy and her guests next. The best-selling illustrative Bible for kids and teens, the Action Bible, is now better than ever. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is an interactive Bible specifically created for kids and teens ages 7 to 15. The Faith in Action Edition is designed to engage young readers in God's Word through hundreds of vividly illustrated Bible stories in chronological order with activities and games. Readers will grow in God's Word by using QR codes, providing free access to over 2,000 and devotionals, hundreds of prayers, character stories, teaching videos, maps, timelines, and much more. Additionally, the Action Bible Faith in Action Edition allows readers to explore the major themes of the Bible like courage, faith, hope, love, service, trust, and wisdom. Each theme provides practical advice on how to live out God's Word. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is the best interactive Bible you can purchase for your child or teen. Purchase your copy today at Sam's Club, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon. Feeling stressed? Let's take better care of you. I'm Bonnie Gray, the host of Breathe, the Stress Less Podcast. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool, a nonprofit that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. To learn more, visit spedhomeschool.com. Here's Peggy Ployer. We're going to talk today on how to maintain healthy boundaries as a homeschool parent with Dr. Amber Sorsic. Welcome, Amber. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Absolutely. I have to let you know that um, the next three interviews are all going to be in person. And these are people in my life that um, speak parent care and healthy and um, and just... Um, feed my soul, um, too, as, as friends and fellow believers. And so, um, so, uh, Dr. Amber is my chiropractor nutritionist, but she's also a member of my church and yeah, small world, yeah, right? small world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so I'm just delighted to introduce her to you and to have her share, um, And I'll just have you kick off by um, sharing with us just a little bit about your journey into homeschooling. Sure. And and then we can kind of start from there. Yes. So um, our journey did not start like this. But, (laughs) you know, I think we always had this different idea about education for our kids. Mm -hmm. And so as I was finishing grad school, we had our oldest. I was pregnant with our second. And... We were just on the search for like, you know, this amazing Mother's Day out somewhere that she could be just a couple hours while I went to class and came home. And we did find um, a Christian based program that really kind of wove in some more natural uh, free play kind of like a Montessori Montessori, style. And yes, a little less rigid that just kind of felt she was from the get-go, a very kinesthetic learner. So say she were in a preschool, that was a bunch of um, worksheets. It would would ever (laughs) have, you know, we really just wanted her somewhere where she was learning through play. She was little. She was just shy of three. Yeah. And so we ended up loving that preschool, which turned into her also attending their Christian school for kinder and first. Got it. Yeah. Then the Lord moved us to Houston and we weren't really sure what to do because she was already in first grade. I don't know why, but homeschool wasn't on my mind at all. Uh I think that being planted here, it became very obvious that there's a big homeschool community in our even local setting. It's not just Houston, you know? Right. And we kept meeting people at the very beginning from um, that we're homeschooling with a classical method. Right. So then I started learning about what the classical method is. And in this mix, 
we had pulled her out of school for the second semester of uh, we moved in the middle of winter. Okay. So we just knew we were going to, you know, do some rendition of homeschool for the remainder of first grade. It just makes sense. Yes, it the felt like transition is so the move hard, was so year. big. Right. Yes. And um, yeah, it just I don't know. I think God just moved and it just fell into right. some some women or some families have these super romantic stories like they are so sure that God called them to right. homeschool. Mm-hmm. And I think ours just naturally happened. So yeah. it's a little less yeah. romantic than knowing that the <laughs> Lord told us to do it, except for that the way was paved so easily. Yes. And people were just put in your path. Exactly. Like that confirmation you just keep getting over and over again. Okay, right. this is what I'm supposed to do. And that's it's hard not to listen when it keeps getting presented. And right. You're like, oh, exactly. Okay. All right. Yes. I better tune in. Yes. This. And so that's, that's just a really good point to put out, you know, what, for anything that happens in our lives. It's true. God is so gentle in leading us and guiding us. It's not like he's going to hit us over the head and say, didn't you get it the first time I told you? (laughs) As much as that would be easier sometimes, you know, when you're kind of like at a crossroads, surely it would be amazing if, you know, you're just looking in the mirror and then Jesus could stand right before you and be like, go this way. (laughs) Absolutely. But it worked, it worked out so well for us. Very fruitful, Mm -hmm. fruitful from the beginning. And then, um, my, so we have three daughters. Yeah. So then the, Second and third were just close to school age after that. So okay. then by the time they were ready to do actual um, kind of curriculum work and, and uh, well, school work. School, yeah. We kind of had the road paved a little bit okay. more because the first year, yeah. couple years are a little bit rocky. They are. I hope it's, that's true for everybody. It, it is. It's, <laughs> it definitely is. And I... It, I always said, well, if I I can get to three years, I will be an expert homeschooler. That didn't happen, <laughs> but it became the the mode of our the how our house functioned okay. by that time. And I think that was the key. I never quite figured it out. Now that I'm done, I still you know can't say that there's a specific way that makes homeschooling perfect. Um, but but yet, when your family's all on board, and when yeah. the kids wake up in the morning and, and know that this is what we do, right that changes the game, but you, it takes a while to change everybody's mental. Definitely. Patterns. Yeah. And just the, yeah. Habits, which is the same, same thing yes. as pattern, you know, mm-hmm. just, and I think maybe we had a little bit of, um, glitching when it came to authority, not from a disobedient standpoint, but just from like, she was kind of, even though she was in a good school setting and I was very pleased with the way they were educating the children, right. it was still different. It was eight hours of hour by hour, which yes. you can't mimic that no. at home. And you don't want to. <laughs> and I don't think she was used to us teaching. Right. Yes. And, and so and parents it, are often removed learn. as an authority when we send our right. kids to school. And we don't think about that, is that we have to reestablish that authority as a parent overall mm-hmm. because the school comes in and takes over that authorship yes. of our children, which is scary. <laughs> yes, for and, sure. Especially yeah. like if you can't or you don't have the flexibility to and freedom to figure out the proper setting. Right. So that was, I think that's some of the slower growth at the beginning. Right. So Absolutely. that was, <clears throat> we've been here five years. So uh, our oldest did kinder and then half of first and then now is doing sixth grade curriculum. So there's... yeah. It's been, it's been five years. Yeah. And then we have absolutely. our other two daughters. They're 18 months apart. So they're both, um, you know, second, third grade-ish. Right. They, th- th- their closeness in age helps us keep them on similar That's coursework, nice. which yes. minimizes exactly. work for me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when we're kicking off a new um, topic this month, actually on Tuesday we did, we talked about creativity and parenting and just how that fuels your spiritual growth. And and so when I approached you about talking about parent care, I, I figured, you know, with your background, Absolutely. you'd come back with something else. And yeah. she said, no, I want to talk about boundaries. And and so so what is it about boundaries and parent care that, you know, that was stirring in you when you said, this is what I want to talk about. I think it would have been so natural for me to go, you know, the human body, right? Because that's my profession and I've done some version of clinical nutrition or um, since I was 19. So, and I just turned 36. So like that was the, my, how I entered 
nutritional care was right. I was um, in grad school and I was researching. So then I did some scientific research, like bench work, actually with whole foods, organic vegetables. And so nutrition yeah. would be, it's not that I wanted a challenge. It's right. just that like, yeah, I think that would have been very expected of me. But yeah. what I will say is that though I've been doing some version of that since I was 19, I really don't think that I was a healthy woman until the Lord put people in my path to teach me um, emotional health. It was almost like uh, I pigeonholed myself into, right. and that's it has to be food, it has to be nutrition, yes, it has exactly. to be like, and that's, um, I I can say just from my own healing journey and just how well I feel Right. That was, I was missing so many key pieces and I, I, and really that just came down to, I think when you have three kids under five, <laughs> all of a sudden exactly. I'm like, oh my gosh, what, why are these tiny humans running my life? <laughs> right. Exactly. And then, like I said, God put people in my path and a wonderful friend from St. Louis was at her own church and she did a study on boundaries and the the book she handed me was, Oh, I'm going to forget the subtitle, but it's it was by Henry Cloud. Yes, yes. Boundaries. About his boundaries. And book, yes. I was like, oh, okay, I'll read it. I put it on my shelf for a while. I spilled coffee on it before <laughs> I even read it. Like I have a visual memory of this thing just lying around. Right. Isn't that the way? Yeah. Like until you're oh, ready yes. for it or until. Exactly. Yeah. So I know I read it with coffee stained pages. Um, but so it already was tattered when I got it, but oh my oh. gosh, it fed my soul. And to know that mm, it was, yeah. it wasn't just a self-help book. No. Scripture was woven throughout it. And so exactly. have you ever seen that picture that'll circulate on the internet sometimes? And it's like a wall of, um, a brick wall or maybe a fence and they have drawn books underneath and it's like a stack of three or four books and it shifts all the bricks above it. Huh. And so that is, that book just did that for me. It just changed so much of everything simply almost by learning the scripture that the Lord asks us to protect our hearts because all that's in it flows from there. After a word from our sponsor, we'll dive back into this conversation. The best-selling illustrative Bible for kids and teens, the Action Bible, is now better than ever. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is an interactive Bible specifically created for kids and teens ages 7 to 15. The Faith in Action Edition is designed to engage young readers in God's Word through hundreds of vividly illustrated Bible stories in chronological order with activities and games. Readers will grow in God's Word by using QR codes, providing free access to over 2,000 and devotionals, hundreds of prayers, character stories, teaching videos, maps, timelines, and much more. Additionally, the Action Bible Faith in Action Edition allows readers to explore the major themes of the Bible like courage, faith, hope, love, service, trust, and wisdom. Each theme provides practical advice on how to live out God's Word. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is the best interactive Bible you can purchase for your child or teen. Purchase your copy today at Sam's Club, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon. Hello, hello, Quinice Petway here, co-host of the Your Daily Bible Verse podcast. Are you someone who loves to take a deep dive into God's Word, one verse at a time, to explore His will for your life and desire to draw closer to Him? If that sounds like you, I'd love to invite you to head over to lifeaudio.com and search your daily Bible verse to tune in and subscribe for daily inspiration, life application, and spiritual transformation through the in-depth exploration of God's Word. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool. Go to spedhomeschool.com to get resources and support for teaching your unique learner at home. So we yes. live our daily lives just putting, locking our doors and our cars and putting fences maybe in our backyard so our dogs don't give out, but we just leave our hearts wide open. Oh, that's so good. Just wide, wide yes. open. Yes. <laughs> and uh -huh. I think we feel guilty by 
protecting that. But scripture yes. tells us to do so. So that was really yes, to easy to surrender to. Well, no, it wasn't yeah. easy to surrender yeah, okay. to. <laughs> but once you once you read the word, it's just kind of like, okay, well, that's convicting if I'm being disobedient to what it says to do. So Absolutely. I need to I need to find this, I need to build this fence. And then yes. there's a gate so you can allow in and you can allow, I mean, you cannot allow. Right. Yeah. So. But it all starts with your heart because mm-hmm. from your heart flows everything yeah. else. And we forget that because we always start with the to-do list of what I need to do and don't. And all the shoulds, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if our heart isn't there, then those lists just go. And I think that, you know, as we're approaching the new year and, you know, those, um, those new year's resolutions that we're having, I think this is a good conversation to have yeah. because that, that really goes back to the, the key of why those resolutions usually don't get fulfilled is mm-hmm. we don't start doing the groundwork. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we have lots of boundary areas in our lives as homeschool moms. <laughs> So what what's the top area that we need to set set boundaries as? I really think I'll, if I can, if I can yeah. I'll just speak uh-huh. from my perspective. So yes. of course we're all going to have our individual priorities, but we're with these kids quite a bit of time and I think because we have a um we have such a passion for a style of education and we have yes. such a passion for how we want to run our homes and raise our children. Mm-hmm. That it can be very all consuming. Yes. And in some cases, rightly so, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't balance your time or. So I think when I was very exhausted and when this book fell in my lap when I needed it most, I was giving my children access to me 24 7. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, and I, I really don't know that that's much of an over exaggeration. Yeah. And, but what that, turned me into is I was not being a wife or a mother that if I could remove myself to look into the situation. You're kind of a teacher 24 seven. Yes. Or even just maybe impolite, maybe Mm -hmm. rude, maybe not loving because I'm so exhausted, right? Because I'm doing the to-do list, but I wasn't feeding myself. I lost my identity. I, again, what was coming out of my heart? Well, probably some pretty yucky behaviors. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say it. I'm sure that there was a couple of years where I didn't been there with you. Yes, exactly. (laughs) And well, how does that? So let's say, for instance, you sit down and you could teach all these scriptures. But then what am I modeling if I did my to do? Exactly. I'm not modeling Christ to my kids if I'm being ugly because it's almost opposite. You might as well just, you know, scrap the to do list. And just love. But I was incapable of just loving because I was so physically drained from round the clock care. And that's not only with kids, but the the only reason I this was my launch pad is because I think my kids were so young at the time that I started to implement these boundaries that you have a little bit of like fewer external commitments. So it wasn't work demanding things or Mm -hmm. other um, relationships. It was the kids were very consuming at that time. Yes. And they are when they're younger. They're they're very physically consuming. Mm-hmm. And then as they get older into their teen and it's mentally consuming. <laughs> so it yeah, has only really changed. Um, I was talking to some other people that are have adult children like I do. And it's like nobody tells you this keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's very taxing on your soul. And, well, and speaking and, of the yeah. nobody telling you, what are all like but what are what they are telling the, you? Yes, exactly. All the supposed experts and all the books and all the things almost make you question your mothering ability if you're incapable of being a superwoman. Like right. if you can't do all the things and have joy in your heart and on your face and you didn't do the craft and the house isn't clean and you didn't cook an organic meal and you did like, <laughs> right. <laughs> at what point do you break? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and at some point we all do. We yes. all hit that breaking point, but we handle it in different ways. But um, but yes, that, that's a really good point. And you kind of alluded to the beginning of this at the like at the beginning of the conversation. So even though um, you may have been 
expecting a structural or a nutritional conversation out of me. Like there's so much balance that we really need to try to attain. So right. that's structural. Um, like we like to teach this in the clinic, structural, biochemical, as well as emotional. So you yes. could be 100% somewhere else. So I'm telling you, there's probably times in my life I was pretty darn close to 100% like nutritionally on point. Yeah. But if, but, but I, but I know <laughs> I spent a large portion of my twenties being not emotionally strong. Yes. <laughs> I don't even like the word strong. Cause that makes it sound like you have to do it all solid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, you can't, you can't, you can't attain health if only one portion of your life is so. I, and I just right. see that and with patients. Puts a lot. you out of balance too. Yes. Because, and then also, I've I've seen people like this. Like when I go to the gym, and you know that becomes their god mm-hmm. too. Oh, good, yes. And then, or the food becomes the yes. god, or their children become their god. Yeah, and it just throws life completely out of whack. And yet we don't see it. It's deception. It, it is. Yeah. yeah. Because you see it as this is good, but right. something good can so swiftly turn into an idol. Yeah. And yeah, it's, so it's just, it's not easy, but that's why conversations like this and having a community mm-hmm. of other homeschooling families or um, women, whether online or in person or at yes. church is mm-hmm. so important because if you isolate yourself and you're all consumed, it's so difficult to look yourself in the mirror because of yeah. deception. Mm-hmm. You just, yes. pride will stand in your way, busyness, will st- everything possible will stand in your way until... Yeah you breach that breaking point. And, and then, I bet yeah. you and I have a heart enough for mothers that we're like, please don't reach your breaking point. Right. Like, exactly. I, yeah. Or I might pray to, for myself, like, please don't let me reach my breaking point. Please put someone in my path to help me see. Exactly. Give me eyes to see, yes. ears to hear. Right. And to be open to others speaking truth into your life. Mm-hmm. That was something I didn't do for a long, long time. And it was so detrimental to me for not allowing that. And now I have some dear friends that I'm like, just come over, tell me whatever (laughs) I need to hear. Right. (laughs) Cause I need to hear it and I need to be back on track because if I get off track, I know what that looks like. Right. And it's bad. It's really bad. Cause I have a way of just diving into things like head first all the time. And, and it's, it's harder to swim back to the top than it would be if someone yeah. like caught you before you fell in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So Definitely true. agree. Yes. And, and so get those people in your life and, um, and definitely be, um, be prayerful about that too. I mean, for years, I just, I had closed so many doors that I don't think people were even willing to speak into my life. Yeah. And I had to be willing to say, I need help. I need friends and I need to find them. And God, of course, just threw somebody down four doors. You're actually, she's going to be on the show next week. It's amazing. Um, into my life that is willing to come over and just look me in the eye and say, what's going on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I need that. Yes. Because, because yes, my boundaries get out of whack all the time. And sometimes it's not even like, here's what tricks me. It doesn't always come from a place of I'm too good to ask for help. That's not true. Hmm. It comes yeah. from a caretaking standpoint of, well, oh, I don't okay. want to bother somebody. Like yes. I've, I've been in those places yes. where I do need help, but oh, they're just busy too. I'll just do it. I surely don't, you know, yeah, if it's a, a task-based thing or right. even emotionally, maybe, oh, I don't want to bother them. They're probably busy today. They don't have, t- they don't, you know, and that's those not true. Yes. Yes, yes. Because as I've grown and, you know, especially in community here and through church and grown in faith, you realize that's the example of all like, of Titus, of their Titus women, like, you know, to be finding women of maybe five years ahead of you, 10 years ahead of you, maybe 40 years ahead of you and just being humble enough to and that's the listen. True. Yes, it is. Yes. Humble and, and just listen. Mm -hmm. Those are the keys for sure. So rest, let's (laughs) talk about that rest and fun. Because I think we leave those out of the equation completely yes. when we start homeschooling and as moms. And, and of course, 
going back to, you know, all of the, the people that are speaking into our life through social media and, and just, you know, all the to-do lists and stuff, those are the, the things that we see as unnecessary or as yeah. not even getting the, on the list in the first place. Why does America hate rest? It's like know. we think we like it. Because you go to another country and like I went to Italy with a friend for 10 days and it was so nice. At lunchtime, everyone goes and spends an hour at lunch or more just, yeah. with people and they talk and they converse. And it was just like a deep sigh mm-hmm. when so we went healing. On that trip. Like is. that could be a it whole, is. that could I mean you could take that emotional, you could take that physical. You know, if we if you wanted to go the the human body route and what it can do, like oh my goodness, it's exactly. but I think that when you try to cultivate that here, you are con- you really feel like you're going against the grain. Yes, absolutely. You say, oh, your kids aren't in fifteen different activities. Oh, like what yes. do, what do y'all what do you do? Uh huh. Yeah, I, I, I promise you, we do a lot of things, but it does right. not include fifteen activities. That's not to say that activities aren't important yeah. and or and you can have community of yes but, but of yes. course <laughs> but I just think that we've somehow cultivated this culture where you know you just got to hit the ground running as soon as that alarm clock beeps everybody's right. up we're all leaving the house we go here we go there we go and I do believe that most homeschoolers um, intentionally set up a little bit of a different lifestyle. For exactly. instance, you might have four kids at the table and you're maybe dad leaves for work, but most of you are home just, but it, I think right. it's, it's always been, that's a very big difference. And that's something we've tried to cultivate in our homeschool of just like being slower because right. that allows, well, isn't that scriptural yeah. too? being yeah. still? Yes. And so then you can allow the Lord to take control of your day because absolutely yes, you want to be productive and he asks you to number your days, but also let's make room for him to work in our day to figure out exactly. what, you know, what conversations need to be have. Yes. We don't have time for God. Right. And his interruptions and all the other things that, that he has planned. Yes. If we absolutely. don't. Absolutely. And I think the one thing I don't, it's been a couple of years since I was having a conversation with another woman wiser than I. And it was just, it, it took this amazing turn where I realized we both realized maybe she even taught me Jesus rested. Yes. So who are you really seriously? If you want to just feel just uh, not guilt, I'm just saying a mild right. conviction, like maybe not even mild, maybe serious, depending upon where you are in your walk. Exactly. Really seriously, who are you if you think you don't need to rest? Yeah, absolutely. When the Lord Mm -hmm. rested and Jesus took himself away from people he loved. Absolutely. From his teaching, from his, you know, ministry to be alone, to pray, to rest. Yes. And so that was kind of another realization in well if that's modeled to me right why Why? me in my human flesh why can i do anything different yeah you can't no you can't you can't absolutely no and i think at one point uh, one bible study i i remember what i was studying but it it just it really impressed on me too when my kids were young I was reading through and just how needy the disciples were for Jesus and thinking how needy my kids were (laughs) and him still saying, I need to be alone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, yes, right. (laughs) that is so, so much needed. My kids need me, but I need to be in God to be what my kids need. So good. And and this morning, actually, I was reading about just um, Jesus feasting and partying. Basically, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that downtime, that, that free time, that time when we, we just kind of let go of all expectations and just have fun right with with other people and that just that community that we build in that and how necessary is and you know these the scribes and the pharisees called him a drunkard and a partier right. because he did that it wasn't they weren't follow, he wasn't following the rules the way the rules were supposed to be followed and and we get so so much like the scribes and the pharisees when we 
start running our home and our lives definitely from that and then there's no room for hospitality which is like i mean you could kind of make rest and hospitality you know they're close cousins exactly because you're resting by being i i want to be i want to have enough white space so to speak on my schedule that if somebody in our circle or a neighbor whom you're supposed to love right space to come have a cup of coffee Right. I don't want to be so scheduled and unrested that either A, I'm not, it, nobody enjoys being around me because right, I'm exactly. frantic, <laughs> or B, I, I'm literally not home. Like maybe I yeah. can't take the phone call or open the door or because right. I, that's just, that's Christ. Christ modeled how he was accessible yes. when he, when, um, when he needed to be or, you know, allowed himself to be, but he also protected his own maybe boundaries. I don't know. Is that, is that weird to say? I suppose it is a boundary to tell the disciples he's, you know, he's stepping away. You'll be okay. Right. And that's a really good analogy too, to think about needy disciples and children, because it's true. It is. It's very. And I, I do believe I remember, I realized at one point I'm tired from answering everybody's needs, trying to solve everybody's problems. Not only my kids, it could be, it could have been extended family. It could have been coworkers. Right. Um, I think when you're a caretaker in general, that's very easy to do. Yes. But I'm, t- I knew that I was tired and needed rest, but I didn't allow myself that. I also didn't allow myself boundaries, but also I loved these tiny humans in front of me so much that I'm like, I don't want them to learn from my behavior that this is what life looks like. I want them to be more calm and rested and happy and able to protect themselves from people who are boundary bullies, quite frankly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So and modeling, go back to that. That is the best way to teach our kids lessons mm -hmm. because they do what we do. And I hate it so much. I know, right? (laughs) Because I do so many things I just wish I didn't. Um, I agree with Paul on that one. (laughs) Definitely. But yet we do. And yes, we can, we can teach it going back to, you know, again, teaching the scripture and all those other things. But if we don't live it, right, we aren't really teaching it. We're just mouthing it Mm -hmm. and it only goes so far. And, and so, yeah, our boundaries have to be lived. And so the change happens in us first. And so um, make sure we're, we're on time here. Um, So as far as questions, I only see creative minds homeschooling has popped on. I see we have a couple other viewers joining us. If you want to put any questions or comments on the feed, um, we're going to be addressing those really soon. I hope you're enjoying the conversation. And um, so, so then, you know, we haven't, we have all these hats we wear and most of us are wives as well. And we have relationships with our husbands. And so what, what have you found as far as, you know, that piece of your life, you know, and integrating it and creating boundaries for your marriage too? Yeah, that was, um, oh my gosh, that's almost, that almost takes precedence over all of this. right? Right. And so, um, I think as husband and wife, my husband, like we learn to protect our time. Yes. And modeled the relationship of Christ in the church through our marriage so that it wasn't a child-centered home. Right. Which then also is a boundary because that sometimes means you can't listen to this conversation. So you need to go play in Uh another room. Uh And I have a very, one child who's very tender hearted. And so not maybe out of nosiness, but just wanting to be involved in everything. Mm, yeah. You that's we've we've just I think we're still training that into her honestly to to realize like there's some things that we're we we have to do this as adults as husband and wife. Sometimes that's fun. Right. Sometimes that's a date night like no you're going to be fine. I know you're sad we're going out of town for a night, but you're going to have so you're much gonna fun. Right. You're going to yes. be okay. Uh-huh. And other times it's logistical like maybe we're working with the family budget and you don't need to sit here and stare at me while we're doing our, you know, (laughs) things like that. But right. um, As a wife, I, this might sound strange, but as a wife, I think that 
my boundaries grew when I really started to study and understand, understand what a healthy and true biblical submission looked like. Yes. Because I probably still, Maybe for the rest of my life, I'm going to have this little bit of wiring inside of me that has weak boundaries. But if I can use gospel lenses to see that I actually don't need to deal with this issue because my husband, who's my headship, can handle this. Yes. So if I'm having weak boundaries, being able to pass it off to a strong husband right. yep. has kept me exactly. in my lane. Yes, and, and I've learned so the freeing. same thing too. It is. If you can work in tandem with your spouse to really compensate for mm-hmm. one another. Because I know there's areas, my husband too, that he has weaker boundaries, but that's where my strong exactly. boundaries are. And I can just, you know, and he'll even turn to me and say, what do we do? And I'm like, this is what we do. Yeah. And I can make that decision because he's one of those people that has to research search something for like two years before making a decision. Sure. And I can make a decision on the spot. And so, you know, those, we, we kind of just tag team yep. those types of things. But over years of marriage, we've learned to rely on it. Right. And, and rest in each other's perspective and good. faith walk mm-hmm. where that has to be developed. And you, again, you Definitely. have to, to learn that, that that's and sometimes okay. you might learn it wrong. So, you yes. you know, like you might have been modeled it incorrectly in a family situation. Um, the world surely does not accept. No. I mean, boundary submissions, a whole nother category. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I tend to I think this is kind of a characteristic of women, but it could just be myself. But I tend to overthink things really easily. So when it comes to a homeschooling journey or maybe even a parenting decision, Right. If I'm like stuck in my head for days, I, I'll still do this where I'm like, why didn't I just, I probably should have just talked to talk my to, husband. Right. About exactly. <laughs> because sometimes it's so black and white for them. It's very easy to, for, you know, just make a decision and set the emotions aside with the decision. Right. Exactly. And then because of the authority of scripture and then the authority of a protective headship, it's easier to just say, okay, the decision has been made because God will protect that because that's his design. Right. Exactly. So there's, there's, there's agreement in that yes. and it's come from both of us. And yes. And that's been um, probably the biggest. So, you know, just learning the true definition of, yes. of submission and how that means we work together, not what the world is right. telling you. Exactly. Submission that somebody is. is, yeah, just telling you what to do yes. and you've got to do it. And yes, exactly. Yeah. My husband and I have always carved out time. Usually we walk the dog. That That's our time because then the kids can't come. They mm-hmm. don't, don't want to come with right. us. <laughs> but that's when we can talk about things that they don't need to hear about, yes. that we can sort through things that we've been processing that we need help making decisions on. And, and that's really helped with us because that's, you know, I think better when I move. And, and so it's, it's just worked out well and the dog needs a walk. And it's and kind it's, of like a designated yes. time, right? Yes, so like exactly. maybe you have a loop in mind so that it takes a exactly. specific amount it takes of time. About 25 to 30 minutes. And yes. then maybe there's, <laughs> when you have younger children, you're a little bit separated from whether it's right. a space, a morning time or something like exactly. that. So there's when less interruptions. Sleeping. So yes. you're not kind of losing your train of thought. Exactly. Because, of course, that matters to the homeschool. Like, the family unit is so important to exactly. the homeschool. It is. And I Absolutely. think, <clears throat> I I feel like we needed growth in this area, though, when we had, t- especially two little, so they were three and a baby. It was just kind of like, in some ways, you feel like you have to give them everything and in, yes. maybe even involve them in everything. But you're... You, you're really putting a lot of weight on their shoulders. Like boundaries feel protective. You feel more protective driving on the road because you know that there's traffic laws that keep Keep people traffic going this direction (laughs) and that direction. And so it's, that's another thing to realize when you're feeling some guilt, Guilt, which I don't believe is from the Lord about a particular boundary. It's teaching your children that, you're you're safe. Exactly. They're safe because you're safe. Yes. Oh, that's really really so. good. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right. So, um, I would love to know what um, 
just a takeaway um, for our viewers as like an action item saying, okay, I've heard all these things. I'm convicted. What can I do? And, you know, I don't want to make this taxing as to do, you know, okay, get out. Now we're going to add more to your to-do list because sure. that's that's the last thing we need. Right. Um, but what can we take away and start moving towards these more healthier boundaries versus where we're at right now, Mm -hmm. instead of, you know, being guilty about it and saying, Oh man, I wish (laughs) my boundaries were better or I just need to go buy the Henry cloud book. (laughs) Right. Or sometimes you just say to yourself, like you're so convicted. Maybe there's a heavy conviction. Then you think, well, tomorrow's a new damn and do everything all at once. Everything. Yes. But that's not breaking old habits anyways, because then you're still trying to be that superwoman who it's just, it's not realistic. So grace, exactly. of course, grace upon grace. Exactly. So praying oh, over yes. the specific conviction that you felt is, yeah, yeah. you know, start there. It's good. But practically, I think I, I'm always that person who like, I like, I do like to plan. I still do like yes. a list. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yes. practically... Um, I think what maybe where we, where I started or we started was making a list of everything we felt like we had to do. Oh, that's good. And then the question that I've learned to ask myself over the years, which was surely taught at a service, um, I believe at One Life was look, look through this with gospel lenses. Like, is yeah, this activity like serving the kingdom? Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> And so that's, yes, that's great. If you, if, if you're building a leader by using um, a sport, an organized sport, but if that's draining everything else in your family, because you're so involved, because you have practices three times a night, or you can't sit at the table together, you know, everybody's too discombobulated right. because of that one thing, even though it's a good thing, that's not serving the kingdom. Right. So we kind of prioritized what what does that look like? What kind of character exactly. were we trying to model in our kids that we were able to, you know, cleanse some relationships, cleanse some yes. activities? Honestly, maybe even as simple as books or school curriculum. Or what about technology use? Yes, no, that's huge. So that's probably an easy takeaway for every, for all of us is to just be a little bit more um, conscientious. Yes, yes. Of, of what you're allowing in. Get rid of what maybe, like that. Does that sound too taxing? Yes. Even though you were no. saying to like, let's make it simple. Let's not take it all. No. Like, just start with a list. Just That's the with, practical. Yeah. Make the but list. I, I think the evaluation part is is so important because we don't sit and evaluate what what is all that we're mm-hmm. doing, and is it leading to a goal that we really want? Right. And because we just think, you know, we add in things. We kind of think, oh, yes, this will be good. But is it good in the overall picture? Yeah. And and does everything work together? Or are we spending way too much time pursuing this goal in the direction that this is taking us versus the overall goal that we want to see, you know, like when our kids launch? Right. Are, are we striving for those goals or are we striving to just make it through this week? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, and that, I mean, that's, that's when it starts to feel like the rat race, even as a homeschool parent, because yeah. there's so many good things. Yes. And, but that's still probably too much. You know, like I, right. you can overwhelm your schedule a little bit too easily. So some people are completely unaware of how much they're doing. So maybe just the list yes. in and of itself will make it visual. And then you think, oh, my gosh. Yeah. No wonder I'm no so wonder tired. Stress. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't know this list was getting so big. Right. Yeah. And and it's I, I find that things just creep in and they just get added and you don't even think about yeah. them. And so having that regular purge time, and I think this time of year is so good as we're looking into the new year and and just thinking, what is it that I'm doing? And is it all directed into the yeah. that that direction I want to want us to be going? And I really feel that God is calling us as a family and my kids. And as your kids get older too, you can make them part of that. Sure. As they need to learn how to do that. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, because just growing it. to an adult doesn't automatically, yeah. like, Don't you know, just wish. because you're 18, yes. <laughs> you don't, you, you might not know how to manage a schedule or, and yeah. as women, isn't it just kind of the classic study in, in scripture of Martha and Mary? 
Like yes. I am absolutely wired as a Martha heart and I don't, but, but we know what right. Jesus prefers and what you, you know, exactly. And isn't that, isn't that another way to ask yourself, well, what does, what does Christ prefer? Yes. Absolutely. So that's, um, you know, those are probably just key little questions. Maybe you just hang on to the questions. Maybe you make your list. Maybe you don't, but maybe you hang on to the questions of, or like, you know, the kind of the, the one liners that I feel like were epiphanies to me, like you should be guarding your heart because it, that's a boundary. Yes. Yeah. And, and asking yourself, am I being Martha or Mary? Maybe you start with a Bible study in that area. The Lord will illuminate it for sure. Exactly. For sure. Yes. Especially if you're absolutely discombobulated currently uh-huh. yes. and you're asking, <laughs> maybe we just needed to start with asking how, where do I start? Yeah. Yeah. And God will be so clear. He, the, that's the prayer. One of the prayers, you know, of all the things that we pray, God wants to answer that for us more, almost more, you know, than anything, because that's where everything that we do starts from. Mm -hmm. And, and he wants to be the Lord of our lives and we have to turn it over to him. And that's, that's how the process starts. Um, so, so you can't see from the video, um, (laughs) that Amber is very pregnant. (laughs) And, um, so you're adding a new baby into all of these boundaries. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people, you may, they may not be having a baby, but they may be having a, a life change that, sure. that's coming up. Or maybe even they're, you know, they're graduating a child. All these big transitions or they're going to move. How do you prepare and how, how have you prepared, you know, as far as what... How how is this going to look? How are these bound? What the yeah. new boundaries I need to put in oh, place? Oh, definitely. So that's probably, I'm sure that we will come across things that we think, oh, we did not think through this. Yes. So <laughs> it will not be a perfect journey. <laughs> but um, gosh, surely, hopefully we've learned some things in 12 years of parenting. Yes. I, I would like to believe <laughs> that we have. So um, well, I keep saying, you know, if I had kids again, I would surely do better. <laughs> yes. I just, uh, I mean, there has to be something that you're, expe- I mean, if you've, if you've been open and humble and coachable and, right. te- you know, sure, surely we've learned some things, but I do think the overwhelming idea is we've really just learned that we're going to, we're going to keep it simple Yes, because so that might look like in a homeschool setting, I'm, we're not probably going to follow the a curriculum for yeah. legalistically mm-hmm. for a couple of months. Maybe, yeah. you know, you just kind of, you, just, you just submit to the sovereignty of God that like he knew this baby was coming. He knew this baby was supposed to right. fit in this family. He knew this baby has three older siblings that also, yes. you know, will need parenting during this time. Yes, so exactly. keeping it simple will probably be the easiest thing to maintain. And then where do boundaries play in with that? Well, then if one of us decides to get this harebrained idea to, you know, (laughs) like, oh, we're going stir crazy. Let's go, you know, out of town. Well, we kind of said we're going to keep it simple. So that's a boundary in and of itself that you're, there's accountability with husband and wife to, to maintain that. And, um, the girls will have to experience something different because they all grew up so close together. Exactly. They they are little mothers. So I'm here's where I'm wondering if my <laughs> what my boundaries will look like because I'm kind of suspectful that I'm going to have an overwhelming amount of help. Ah. And so I'm preparing myself already to feel comfortable saying, "I know you love her" because this is another daughter. Oh, exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know you love her, but she really needs to be with me right now, or I know you love her, but she's napping. We're not, you don't need to be kissing right, her, touching exactly. her. Yes. Yes. You know, like yes. just finding peace within my own heart of telling them this, this is okay. Yes. This is not. And, and yet, without and, feeling and, bad. Cause my emotions right. get so mixed up in that where I will start to be like, Oh, but they love her yes. and they mean well, and they want to snuggle her. Okay. I'll allow it. But then maybe I just said, no, I don't want to do it. And then right. I allow yes. it. And then they're all confused. <laughs> exactly. So, um, it's been more of a heart journey for me leading up to her birth to, to know yes. that, 
it's just things have to slow down and I, I don't need to feel bad about that. Right. Schoolwork might need to be paused and I don't need to feel bad about that. And I, I just have to maintain authority over some of the decisions, you know, when we're, when it's just the exactly. five of us at home, even though they mean well and they want to be incredibly involved because that's my assumption. Right. I'm not going to hurt them or suppress their emotions if I don't allow that. Exactly. Because yes. there'll come a time, you know, they'll, they'll have yes. an opportunity in the next three hours. It's just not right now. Right. Exactly. So. And when you can look at it from that perspective is that it's not that you're, you're cutting off the relationship. You're just making space right. for what needs to happen now to happen. And, um, I, I learned that lesson huge when I had cancer, um, uh, because my life just upended and, and I had, didn't have time to plan, <laughs> Right, but I learned very quickly that everything that was not necessary had to go mm. and it just had to be the way it was. And now you know, with length of time between when that started to how you've healed and where you're at now, you can probably see in hindsight. Yes. It really was all okay. It, it was okay. God took care of what was needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And, and I learned a lot of things about the boundaries that I needed to put in my own life that weren't there that yeah. were detrimental to my health. That's so good. And, and it's just, do you want to learn the hard way or do you want to learn the easy way? Um, that yeah. unfortunately is where it comes down to. And when we don't take the time on the front end, it will be taken mm -hmm. on the back end. Absolutely. And, and so, so and thinking, one may be healthy. One should be healthy and the other is harmful, you know, again, to that breaking point or, to the detriment of your physical body. Yes, it's, absolutely. And and it's, yeah, I just realized, well, all those times that I didn't go to bed early and I, you know, and I didn't do this and I didn't do that, well, I'm paying for it now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it wakes you up really quickly um, because, yes, you're, you're going to make time for it eventually. Yeah. And do you want to plan for it or do you not? Um, yeah, yeah. So Creative Minds Homeschooling has a couple of things here. I'm gonna, she said, my kids are very light sleepers, so we are moving our rooms around so we can have a place to go to relax and unwind and connect without the kids coming um, to say, mom and dad, can you talk quieter? <laughs> so <laughs> even space, you know, I didn't think yeah, about that. As far as boundaries point. and setting up our mm -hmm. homes, um, that's a really great point is we don't often think about how we set up our space as to create right. proper boundaries with our kids. Um, and, and so, yeah. And then she talked about um, just gymnastics and, um, you know, the, the cost as well as the involvement and you know, all these activities that we add. And some activities are good. I mean, like you said, we want, right. we don't want to like just you cut ourselves harp, off from the, on the activities. Yes. You can't say like, this is bad, but it could be so great. What if it is amazing? What if you actually have a gymnast? Yes. But the Lord is giving you, there's unrest in your heart and you can feel that it's you're discerning that God's leading you another way. We have to be willing to walk away from those things. Exactly. That is a proper boundary and that is hard. Yes. But it's still, you know, there can be peace when you submit to the word. And then you also need to have, I think, very real support other women in your lives or other families to yes. reassure you that it's okay. Right. I promise you're not ruining your child. You're ruining your child. Because and isn't that's that what the just world like what, tell us yes. is like you're, you're How cutting dare off you? all possibility for them to ever, you know, use They'll never that do talent it again. or gift. Yes. And yes. And it's just not no. the way it mm -mm. is. And, and that may be what, what they did. It was all they needed for, for what God has prepared yet for them. Yes. And it's, you know, we, we often will strive for our own goals for our children instead of yeah. God's goals. Oh, gosh, goals that's a good word for our children. Definitely. Just thinking, and, you know, keeping that perspective of not... It's just, our value system just gets skewed. And when your values right. are skewed that way of, you know, productivity, well, there goes rest. If you yes. only find value <laughs> in being productive or uh -huh. um, it, maybe how you give or receive love, you're, that's skewed, well... That will take, that's going to tangle up your boundaries because yes. if you believe that you're loving your child by providing gymnastics and that's the only way that it's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. Well, 
then that's really going to be hard to put that boundary up and to say, because you're going to remove it and feel as if you're removing love. But that's oh, just yes. not true. No, it's not. So but, it, I, I, it is, I mean... Gosh, it takes yes. resilience. Isn't it that why yeah. we have these conversations <laughs> exactly. and why they're, why we yeah. need podcasts, great books, amazing pastors, churches that don't water down the word, all the exactly. things, because I think as a Christian period, you're going against the world. Yes, and, you are. I mean, mm-hmm. probably mm-hmm. multiple generations have felt this, but I think it's really heavy it's in 2022. Heavy yes. And, and now we have like, access to our cell phones and we can carry a computer all the time. And then you have social media and all these things to compare. So it's just like you can study the wrong things and be so involved yes. that you just feel more and more and more isolated. Yeah. And so that's, I just think resilience is the right word. It is. It really so is. It needs support. It needs these great conversations. And yeah. And really to know that you're not alone. Yeah. I mean that we all go through these struggles. We all have these, these tensions in our lives and we don't have it figured out. Mm-hmm. Um, God has it figured out. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we have to rely on him and and just be okay. And my tensions are going to be different than your tensions. Mm-hmm. And then the direction God takes you is going to be different than mine. Right. And they're both good. Mm-hmm. And they're good in his eyes. But we have to be okay with, this is what he's asked me to give up. This is what he's right. asked our family to give up. This is the path that we are on. And... And that I can rest in Mm -hmm. because of his sovereignty and just, and and he asks you to participate. You're participating because you're discerning what he's asking you to to do. Well, then you do what you're obedient to what he's asking because someone said to me once that like, for instance, if you had a particular conviction and I didn't, well, I'm not necessarily being disobedient um, unless I'm not hearing. Yeah. But once it's illuminated to me and I decide not to act on it, well, then I am being disobedient. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so, yep. again, you pray for eyes to see and ears to hear. And right. um, there there will be fruit in that, even if you can't see it. But that's the testimony to faith, that right. even if you can't see it, you still you still say, I'm, I'm really certain right. that we need to postpone this activity for now. Exactly. I don't know what yes. the future holds for us, but I'm I'm mm-hmm. really wanting to listen. And I'll mm-hmm. say that to yes. our kids sometimes. We've we've they're immature yet, of course. They're twelve and under, but I don't okay. think it's too soon to say, I really feel God leading our family this way. So we're gonna listen to the Lord and we're going to trust him. And exactly. Um for a time being that yeah. means we're pausing yeah. activities or yeah. whatever it may right. be. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, an incredible story with my, and it was at a very young age. I think my, my son was about, about 11 or 12, maybe it was like right before he was going into youth group. So, um, but God called us to sell our house and we were convicted. My husband and I were totally convicted that we needed to sell our house. And he was adamant. This is where God wanted us to stay for the rest of our lives. And I said, fine, you pray about it. Mm. And have God speak to you. And two days later, he prayed that morning, said, God, today's the day. But he didn't tell any of us that that he wanted, that he was going to pray and that God was supposed to answer him that day. And that whole day, he was watching and waiting for God to speak to him. And, and that night, he sat down. And in the dark, our kids always got together. And they sat on my daughter's bed. And they played an audio tape. And they put in an audio tape in the dark. And it was Mr. Henry's Wild and Wacky Bible Stories. And he hit play. And the story was about God calling Abraham, get out of this land. (laughs) And he's like, no. And he knew knew that was God speaking to him. And of course, we never had any issues after that with the move. But but like, I I call it kind of like loaning out my my faith to my kids, but allowing them to have that opportunity to hear God speak as well. And those, um, God will set definite boundaries and he will keep repeating those Mm -hmm. because he wants us to live how he wants us to live. And and it's just being aware instead of so on track. I mean, we've been talking about this this whole time is it's us, or it's him. Mm-hmm. And For we sure. have to give up us. Yes. So that and you've just added so much information and and wisdom into this. And I just want to thank you for this conversation. Oh, well, I'm so, it's, this has been, it's been 
I mean, it's always on my heart. I think I just, I just have such a passion for, I don't know, healthy families and and women just because yeah, I lived a good decade of my life just too burdened and buried where I know that I, like I said at the beginning, I was not the wife or the mother that I, that the Lord would have wanted me to be. And I, I just, I couldn't hear it for so long that right. I, I, we just all need to lift each other up and be exactly. safe for conversations because right. yes. that does not happen on social media either. There's no, no safety there. There's I mean, you're not, not. going to be able to share vulnerably on Facebook and get generally loving answers. Right. Yes. And so finding exactly. your people and having these difficult conversations and having a lady four doors down who's willing to say, I love you, but this is out of line. And right. you being humble enough to hear it will be paramount into creating yes. a healthy lifestyle and being able to put down new boundaries, which might be new for you. Right. Because they exactly. feel uncomfortable. They're very uncomfortable. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's remind you of that. This is an uncomfortable yeah. process, yeah. but it's uncomfortable to become more comfortable mm -hmm. and, and really to be able to strive for the walk you want instead of just keeping on that hamster wheel definitely that, that we're on it's a great so. analogy yes all right well we have um, used up the hour. This has been so fun. I just want to thank you all for joining us that have joined us live. If you joined us on the podcast, um, just know that um, this um, broadcast was sponsored by viewers like you. If you'd like to make a tax deductible donation to Sped Homeschool, you can visit our website at spedhomeschool.com. And we have these conversations um, usually on Tuesdays. Today's Thursday. Um, we've got um, some back to back ones um, through this month of December. I had said last podcast, um, we're setting some boundaries for our team this month, too. We're trying to to get some time off for me and um, some of my, the people that work on our video editing and podcast editing so they can get a little time with their families over uh, Christmas and New Year's. So, um, so we're setting some boundaries as well, but want to just keep encouraging you with these conversations and these videos. So thanks for joining us. And thank you, Amber, for thanks your time. Again. This Absolutely. has been so fun. And um, my next guest will be in person um, next Tuesday at our regular time. Um, she's a friend of both mine and Amber's. Um, her name is Leslie Hurd, and we're going to talk about nutrition and doable um, nutrition 101 kind of for um, you as a busy homeschooling parent. And so you'll want to join us back here um, next time for that. So thanks, everybody, and um, have a great weekend. And I will see you on Tuesday next week. God bless. Bye, everyone. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on this podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. This has been Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. God invites us to cultivate thankful hearts by turning our eyes toward Him in good times and bad. To listen to more Abide Christian Meditations, just go to lifeaudio.com or search your favorite podcast app for Abide Christian Meditation. You can also download the Abide app for more biblical meditations at abide.com.